I'm out in the middle of nowhere with a flat tire. Don't look at the tire. But thankfully, I'm an engineer that thinks ahead. So I put my 3D printer where my tool should be in case of emergencies. So it's time to 3D print a jack. So I set off for as long as my extension cable would take me. 3D printer in one hand and ingenuity in the other. But holy cow, is it hot outside? I honestly just went back in my shop. I'm not even gonna lie to you. So I started off modeling a scissor jack in Onshape, then I test printed it in PLA and threw it all together. Behold, a 3D printed scissor jack, uh, fully 3D printed, no metal, because that's cheating. About 20 to 30% infill. I don't know what the limit of it is, is gonna be. So to test that, I, I just kind of stood on it. I don't really know the best way to test out a homemade ratchet scissor jack to see if it holds any weight. What is the next step to like crank it up while someone's on it, I guess? How do I? We, we, <sighs> bro. So I listened to Dan for better or for worse and attempted to jack up the back of my 900 pound lawnmower. Oh. That thing is moving up. <laughs> I'm just kind of prepared for this to explode in my face. This seems like the perfect time for a safety disclaimer. This was all done in a safe environment. Every machine that was lifted had a high clearance. We wore safety glasses and it didn't go under the machines at all, okay? So what I'm saying is we were safe, but please don't do this at home. Are they off the ground? It's off the ground! I don't really know how much higher we need to go with this. Ah, uh, fast forward to... Ta-da! Surprise, I also printed a jack stand. As I started to let the lawnmower down onto the stand, I noticed something was a little bit off about the scissor jack. Oh! oh. What was that? A little... So, uh... uh to something else that's concerning, that screw is not, it, it, it's not straight. I'm a little concerned about that. I'm a little concerned about the teeth that are broken. Um, yes, thank you for the demonstration. I knew the one time I wasn't gonna be recording something would happen. I, I was taking this thing down and, and you know, right after we pointed out the, the, the screw, so it was back to the drawing board, but this time I added gears to keep the middle blocks parallel to each other, just so that the threaded rod would stay straight. But when I went to go give it a try... <laughs> what happened? What happened, my child? We didn't chalk the wheels so it rolled forward. I mean, you didn't chalk the wheels so it rolled forward. <laughs> I beefed up the model one last time and decided to give the jack stand a go. Oh, we're off the ground. Letting it down on top of the slightly sketchy jack. Oh, whoa. Oh. Wow. Whoa, wait. Yes! Oh, it's definitely cracked. That, that, that's a crack. But I still wanted to see its limits, so I jacked up the other end of the mower until the whole thing was just off the ground. And yes, the crack eventually caught up with it. Wow, but you're gonna so Ooh, I'm gonna work with the jack stand. <laughs> but it told me what areas to beef up, and after a quick revision to the base, I tried again. Is it already there? It is. Oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I have to, I stood on it last time. I have to stand on it again, right? So now it's time to blow all of my money on filament. That's not PLA. <laughs> now would be the time for me to tell you all the cool scientific properties that make polycarbonate awesome, but if I'm being honest, chemistry was always the hardest science topic for me, and I avoided it in college. So like, this is what you're gonna get from me. Also, my husband's a material science engineer, and that comment made him a little bit sad. So here's the actual material properties, if you care about that kind of thing. After a bunch of printing, I was finally ready to give it a go. It is time. We're going. We're under tension now. The polycarbonate jack was printed at 100% infill, and we had to boost it up with some wood. But as I started cranking it up, we realized even at its tallest point, the jack wasn't going to lift the tire all the way off the ground. Okay, we've got more wood underneath there now, so we already, like, gave it that initial step up. Every now and again, we definitely heard some unsettling sounds. Pretty sure that was the wood. Like, I... It was the wood. And it was working very, 
very slowly, and honestly, it became exhausting to the point that me and Dan actually had to switch off here and there. I'm never getting stuck in the middle of nowhere ever again. Is it off the ground yet? Please, please. Oh my gosh, there's no weight on the tire. It's just, it's just barely touching the ground. It's so close. It's so close. Ugh! Come on. Should I like have a shield in front of me or something? All right, please. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs>will say it's fake. I'm not sticking my fingers underneath there though. Wait, are we changing the tire? <laughs> nah, I just wanted to lift the car, bro. <laughs> More. <laughs> More. More. <laughs> oh no. Wait, I, I thought, I, I thought I'd... You were stranded. I'm not. <laughs> After the scissor jack, we tried to use two of the jack stands that we made on half the car. Their bases were printed out of PLA, so we didn't want to push it too much, but they did end up propping up most of the weight on half the car. That is not gonna work. That is not gonna work. It is crunching. The tire still has contact with the ground, but like it's pretty much almost going under there like it was when we were jacking the thing up. But anyway, that's kind of boring. Remember when we lifted a car off the ground? Looking at this thing after, I was just kind of curious as to what it looked like. Um, everything looks normal to me right now, except for there's a crack right there. Little bitty crack. I don't know if it would have actually split or done anything. The same crack is right here. I think like it might have just under extruded or something when it printed. And then we, we put a car on it and it was like, oh, okay. Besides that though, the grease is gross but it was very necessary. Besides that though, I, this thing worked too well. But yeah, um, it worked. Would I recommend it? No, don't do this. This is dumb. Why are you watching this video? Why, stop. Actually, don't stop because, because you know what does work is Onshape, the sponsor of today's video. So throughout this video, you might have noticed this cool little software. Just kidding, it's not little. It's actually really big brain. This is Onshape. I've started using it for all my CAD modeling and it's been a breeze. The best part is Onshape is browser-based, meaning I can collaborate with others and I don't have to wait for some massive program to load and I can access all my models whether I'm in my office or the workshop. It's been able to handle everything I've thrown at it thus far. It's a professional grade CAD system I can access from anywhere, anytime, even on my iPad. So I'll definitely be using it to model everything I need in the near future. So if you're interested in trying out Onshape, you can actually sign up for free using the link in the description. No download, no anything. You just access it from your internet browser. But yes, 10 out of 10. Would definitely recommend. Go check it out.